Jack, I was reading the average age of your company, the average employee's age is 27. We're even younger here on the continent. The average age, I think, is 19. So feel at home. Um, I want to now turn to uh, the Secretary General of UNCTAD, who's just been reconfirmed for a second term. I believe the first Secretary General to serve two terms. It has been an incredible privilege knowing Dr. Kituyu. He, he really is an erudite, mercurial polymath. Now, could please look those words up because they're all accurate, I think. Dr. Kituyu became UNCTAD's seventh Secretary General on the 1st of September 2013. Extensive background as an elected official, academic, holder of high government office, wide ranging experience in trade negotiations and in African and broader international economics and diplomacy. I'm surprised Madam Theresa May hasn't called you up to help her out with Brexit. But <laughs> so I'm sure you could. Dr. Kituyu, can I give you the floor? Thank you. Thank you very much. Just some correction. I have appeared before the Commons uh, Trade Committee and in Lancaster on the Commonwealth discussion of post Brexit. You see, trade I relations. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, my friend uh, Jack Ma, Honorable Ministers, CEOs of enterprises, our visitors from China, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'll just say a few words about why I invited Jack Ma to come to Nairobi and my expectations of what we can do on this occasion. <clears throat> In 2015, the global value of electronic commerce reached 25 trillion US dollars. That is only marginally less than the combined wealth of the 100 richest enterprises in the world, whose combined value is 27 trillion dollars. In a series of international engagements about inclusive prosperity, about responsibilities to the future, I had the privilege to listen to Jack Ma before I asked him to become a special envoy of UNCTAD. And two, three things always stuck out for me. One, his rendition that in history, the first generation of new technology creates wealth for the innovators. And after those two decades, it's entrepreneurs, not the innovators, who make wealth from that technology. The second is a statement that the weakest people are those who surrender when they are defeated in one attempt to m make things work. There is no heroism, there is no misery in failing. But there is heroism in always picking yourself up and going on again. And the third thing, was a global awareness, at least outside the politics of Jubilee and NASA, there is a certain awareness that if you are in business and you have no visibility on electronic market, you don't exist. You might pretend for a short while that you'll increase what you sell to Burundi or expand your sales in uh, South Nyanza, but in the emerging world, if you have no electronic visibility, you are irrelevant to the future. <laughs> this brought me to two things. The first one was to seek Jack Ma to accept to be a special envoy of UNCTAD in the face of competition from some of the largest enterprises and UN agencies uh, that were also interested in him. And as I mentioned to him, my success was partly because I got substantial support from the President of the World Bank and the then Secretary General of the UN, that Kitu is the right partner. And Jack and I have never looked back since then. When we agreed since last September that he becomes an Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations, the most expensive employee under me, but <laughs> whom I pay one dollar per annum, Jack said, I will accept this on two conditions. One, that a principal message we have is a message for African young people. And two, that you'll create possibility for us to take that message to Africa. This is keeping my part of the bargain. That Jack <laughs> has the opportunity to talk directly, not just to young entrepreneurs and encourage them, to all entrepreneurs and encourage them, but also talk to power 
that the infrastructure to get Africa platform, electronic platform, platform visibility is broadly available. The political will and the mechanics of making it work has not received sufficient impetus. Now, having said that, I want to finish off with just uh, what I'm expecting of this trip. I mentioned at a meeting we had this morning with the president that more than 50% of the people who have been getting to me about wanting to be in this meeting were saying they want opportunities to be commission agents of Chinese enterprises. <laughs> and I was very upset with them. I said, you know, China has grown, taken 600 million people out of poverty through trade. So definitely trade is important. But they did not do that by trading other people's goods. They did that by trading their goods outwards. <laughs> Jack Ma's significance to China is how he has helped people access markets. Persons who did not know that they mattered, who were empowered by a technology that allowed them to trade outwards. I was not inviting him to walk to Africa with me to open markets for Alibaba. I invited him to walk to Africa with me to say Africa can do what Alibaba has done for China. <laughs> so we have a mixed audience of African entrepreneurs and Chinese entrepreneurs here. I want a very unusual ask of you for a Chinese entrepreneur to see what value added African export he can take to China. And for the Kenyan and African entrepreneur, what value-added product you can take out of Kenya? We are at a unique moment. Africa needs now to speak with one voice that the world is ready. In many countries like your own, you have the foundings of the infrastructure. Cultivate the policy direction that you cannot trade in small pockets anymore. You are not Kenyan entrepreneurs. You are entrepreneurs in a competitive world. Efficient trade facilitation without building your productive capacity will reduce your own market share in your own territory. So we help facilitate trade, but build a capacity to outward, build capacity to benefit from it. That is the least I can ask of you. I hope at the end of this exercise, we have very, very, very serious entrepreneurs in the room and not to mention one uh, gentleman who is worth more than 42 billion US dollars sitting in front of me. But use that opportunity constructively. After our engagement now, as Jack and I go to a public lecture at Nairobi University, there will be a high tea, and it will be very good for some of you to continue informally consulting. I was very glad that uh, Jack has said today, he decided late this morning that he's going to look seriously at being a business partner in Kenya at something he decided today. I hope when I go with him to Masai Mara this weekend, he'll have a second reason why he should want to come back to Kenya many, many more times. <laughs> very, very finally, I want to ask of you, the narrative out there assumes that you had a one-off miracle intelligence called Safaricom. But they don't know that the DNA that produces Safaricom can produce a diversified product range. I think surprise the world by your capacities. Don't drown it in the pettiness that is so easy and tempting in this country. Thank you for your kind attention.